Welcome to the Panama City plant of Arizona Chemical. We're glad that you've been selected to work on our site. It is our hope that this brief video will provide you with the awareness and information you need to ensure that you conduct your business in the safest and most productive manner. In 1930, International Paper and American Cyanamid founded Arizona Chemical to mine salt cake in Camp Verde, Arizona. In 1936, when the mine closed, Arizona Chemical relocated in Panama City, Florida and Spring Hill, Louisiana. Arizona Chemical is the world's leading biorefiner of pine chemicals. We provide natural pine-based materials to our customers in many diverse markets, including adhesives, inks, coatings, road marking, tires and rubber, personal care, lubricants, fuel additives, mining, and oil field. Since the beginning, we have been committed to making the world healthier, cleaner, safer, and more efficient. We refine and upgrade crude tall oil and crude sulfate turpentine, both of which are co-products of the wood pulping process to produce paper. CTO and CST are sustainable and biodegradable raw materials that originate from the pine tree. Thanks to our state-of-the-art manufacturing practices, we are able to generate the highest value from crude tall oil, a co-product of the paper making process, while optimizing energy efficiency and minimizing emissions and waste. All our 10 manufacturing locations are accredited to high environmental standards. Arizona Chemical is the largest producer of pine chemicals in the world. Our 10 production facilities in the U.S. and Europe are equipped with state-of-the-art controls and staffed by highly skilled and experienced personnel, which enable us to generate the highest value from crude tall oil while providing our customers with world-class products and service. This video will cover general plant safety rules, potential workplace hazards, emergencies, and evacuation procedures. Thank you for your attention and welcome to our site. This section will cover the following topics, access control, general plant safety rules, emergency and evacuation procedures, potential workplace hazards, process overviews, process safety management covered areas, and environmental overview. At Arizona Chemical Panama City Plant, contractors and visitors are expected to adhere to the same safety policies and procedures as Arizona Chemical employees. Failure to comply with these procedures will not be tolerated and could lead to dismissal. Upon arrival at the Panama City plant, all contractors must first report to the Cherry Street guardhouse to sign in and receive an ID badge. The contractor contact will ensure that the contractor has received the plant's contractor orientation. After signing in at the guardhouse, contractors must then report to their respected control room and sign in before initiating the job. Normal contractor and visitor access hours are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Access at all other times must be prearranged and approved by the Arizona Chemical Contract Coordinator. Visitors should park in the parking places marked in the main office building parking lot. These can be found just south of the main office building fence, as shown here. Contractor parking is located in the two parking lots along Cherry Street. Contractors are expected to park their personal vehicles in the designated parking areas. Vehicles are only permitted inside the plant gate if a vehicle pass is obtained from the security guard and approved by the contractor contact. The vehicles must visibly display the vehicle pass on the front of the dash at all times while inside the plant. Driving your vehicle in the plant constitutes consent to inspection. Refusal of inspection will result in you being removed and barred from the site. The plant speed limit is 5 miles per hour and all other traffic signs must be obeyed. Vehicle congestion due to the number of contractor vehicles, powered industrial trucks, tractor trailers and golf carts poses a potential vehicle pedestrian hazard in our plant. Drivers must be aware of pedestrians at all times. Pedestrians have the right of way. There are blind intersections located in the plant that require particular attention. 
Mirrors are located at each of the blind intersections to improve visibility. Seat belts must be worn and passengers in the rear of pickup trucks must be seated within the confines of the bed. Riding on the side or on the tailgate is prohibited. Cell phones are prohibited in some areas of the plant. Cell phones are prohibited in the turpin resin process areas of the plant except in the control rooms and roadways. You may use your own two-way radio if they are intrinsically safe and authorized by the EHS department. Do not use cameras, cell phone cameras, or other recording devices in the plant without the permission of the plant manager. The use of, possession, sale, transfer, or purchase of alcohol, illegal drugs, controlled substance, firearms, and other weapons are prohibited in the facility. Having any of these items on company property will result in the visitor or contractor employee and or the contractor being banned from the facility. Standard personal protective equipment, also called PPE, including a non-metallic ANSI approved hard hat, safety glasses with approved side protection, and steel-toed safety shoes are required in all production and maintenance areas. All PPE worn must be in good condition Dark tinted glasses shall not be worn inside. All contractors and visitors must wear proper PPE when entering the plant to perform work, troubleshooting equipment, or participating in a plant tour. Shirts must be long sleeves and any loose or bulky clothing must be tucked in before working around machinery with moving parts that might become entangled. In addition to our standard PPE, Hearing protection must be worn at all times in high noise areas. Areas that require hearing protection are posted throughout the facility. Hearing protection is also required when operating tools and equipment having high noise levels. Examples are jackhammers, power saws, air compressors, and hydroblasters. Smoking is prohibited in the plant except in designated areas. The designated areas are clearly marked with signs. If not sure, ask your contractor contact. Emergency procedures, alarms, safe zone signs, and siren poles. This section will cover plant emergencies and evacuation procedures. Before working in an area, identify and become familiar with the evacuation routes and exits. In the event of a drill or an emergency occurs, contractors' visitors should report to the appropriate primary safe zone for accountability. Signing in the control rooms is another safety element in ensuring the safety of contractors working in our facility. Safe Zones In the event the plant employee alarm system is activated, contractors are to proceed to their appropriate evacuation safe zone. Primary Safe Zone A is located at the maintenance building. Primary Safe Zone B is located at the front office parking lot. Evacuation wardens will be present at each primary safe zone to conduct a head count and provide further instructions. The employee alarm system is tested monthly at different times of the month. This siren and message is only a test. Each major area of the plant has its own distinct siren or tone followed by a voice message indicating the area and the type of emergency. If you did not hear the first message, move to another location. The message will be repeated. Part two will address two topics, special work permits and procedures for contractors performing work at the Panama City plant. All work must be stopped and the permits are null and void in the event of an emergency and work will not begin again until authorized to do so by the contractor contact. The safe work permit is the minimum permit required to perform work in the plant. Before obtaining a safe work permit, a method statement must be submitted by the contractor and reviewed by the permit authorizer. A method statement is a document that describes how work is to be carried out, identifies the work activities, and the description of the equipment used to perform the work. The safe work permit will list any equipment that needs to be locked out any other safety permits required, assess all risks by identifying hazards and the measures used to control these hazards, and will list any personal protective equipment required. All contractors must have a safe work permit before beginning work. 
Barricade tape is a method to warn personnel of hazards or potential hazardous conditions. Anytime barricade tape is used, a green barricade tag must be attached to the tape at all access points to the hazard area. Required information on the tag includes who erected the barricade, reason for the barricade, date erected, special PPE, who to contact for entry or removal, phone, pager number, and on the back, the list of authorized entrants. The tape shall be completely removed and disposed of when the hazard no longer exists. If a contractor does not have barricade tape, he or she shall obtain barricade tape from their Arizona Chemical contractor contact. Danger do not enter tape shall be used in situations when entry is prohibited to all personnel except those directly involved in the work or correcting the condition. Examples of such use include chemical or product spills, line breaking, overhead hazards such as suspended loads or elevated work. Yellow barricade tape is to caution personnel and is used where employees may work safely around the hazard with proper knowledge and procedures. Examples of use include water leaks, general work areas, and where less severe hazards are present. Each contractor is responsible for housekeeping on the work site. All work areas shall be kept clean and orderly. Housekeeping hazards will not be tolerated. Exit doors, exit routes, and all passageways must be kept unobstructed. All hoses, cables, and electrical cords should be positioned to eliminate trip hazards. Contractors are expected to erect scaffolding with the protection of their employees and employees of Arizona Chemical in mind. Contractors shall ensure that the area is clear of any scaffold-related hazards, such as falls, falling objects, structural instability, electrocution, and overloading. OSHA regulations require that scaffold workers be able to recognize the hazards associated with the scaffold they are using and to understand the procedures needed to control, eliminate, and or minimize those hazards. We have several types of confined spaces at Panama City. Examples include storage tanks, sumps, and trenches greater than four feet deep. Confined spaces shall have a sign posted at each entrance to the space. Entry into a confined space occurs as soon as the employee breaks the plane of an opening with any part of his or her body. A method statement is required for all confined space entries. Entrants are those who enter the space and understand what hazards may be encountered during the entry with the signs or symptoms and the consequences of exposure to those hazards. Entrants must make proper use of the specified equipment such as monitoring equipment, ventilating equipment, communications equipment, PPE, lighting, barriers and shields, egress and ingress equipment, and must sign in and out each time they enter or leave the space. Entrants must wear a full body harness when entering a confined space to facilitate rescue if needed. Entrants must communicate with the attendant as necessary to enable the attendant to monitor the status of the space. Entrants must alert the attendant when warning signs and symptoms of hazard exposure are present or if they detect a prohibited condition. Entrants must exit from the space as quickly as possible whenever ordered to do so by the attendant or entry supervisor or if they recognize any warning signs or symptoms of exposure, material leaking in, loss of ventilation, etc., or if an evacuation alarm is activated. The attendant's responsibilities are to know and understand the hazards that may be encountered during the entry, know the signs or symptoms of the exposure. The attendant must not have any other duties that can interfere with the primary duty of monitoring and protecting the authorized entrance. The attendant monitors the entrance status and alerts them of the need to evacuate if permit conditions change or the plant's alarm system is activated. The attendant must also control access to the space, warn unauthorized persons to stay away from the space, contact the rescue team prior to entry, remain outside the space during entry operations until properly relieved by a qualified attendant, and contact the rescue team if needed on channel six if a rescue is needed. 
The atmospheric test for all confined space entries must, at a minimum, be tested 30 minutes prior to entry. Continuous monitoring will be conducted for all confined space entries. The continuous monitor readings should be recorded on the confined space entry permit every two hours. When welding is to be conducted inside a confined space, local exhaust ventilation or mechanical ventilation must be used to capture and remove the welding fumes from the space. A continuous monitor is required in the space in the event the atmosphere in a confined space changes. While conducting hot work in a confined space, the welding unit and gas cylinders must remain outside the space. All welding hoses must be removed from the space when the space is unoccupied. Portable electric equipment and lighting must have a ground fault circuit interrupter. The confined space entry permit is valid for the time noted on the permit or up to 12 hours. A new confined space entry permit will be required if the scope of the job changes from the original scope of the permit or any other reason by the entry supervisor. Line breaking is any activity during which normally closed process piping systems are opened to the atmosphere, the intentional opening of a pipe, line, duct, vessel, or equipment. A safe work permit must be obtained and preparations made prior to opening any process system. The line break procedure will list materials that could be present by their primary hazard classification. This is used to communicate the potential physical and health hazards associated with the work. Hazardous materials are toxic, corrosives, irritants, combustibles, flammables, hot materials above 120 degrees, and high pressure systems above 30 psi. A process system is any system that is part of or connected to a process containing a hazardous or non-hazardous material. Examples are pumps, pipelines, vessels, gauges, flow meters, exchangers. An opening activity is any activity during which closed process systems are opened to atmospheric pressure. All sections of the permit must be filled out. The permit must be available at the work site. It is valid for the time of the permit or 12 hours, whichever comes first. The system shall be isolated by closing and locking valves, stored energy released where possible, and prepared according to zero energy state procedures. Personnel opening any process systems must wear, at a minimum, the PPE listed on the permit and the appropriate type of protective gloves for the materials or chemicals that may be present. Reasonable steps must be taken to barricade the area including above and below the equipment being opened as necessary. Always loosen or break the flange bolts away from you first. Valve bonnets are to be handled in a like manner. When manways are removed, at least four bolts and nuts shall be secured loosely until the manway has been loosened enough to break the gasket seal. Employees shall stand to the side of the manway in the event a level of material remains in the vessel. When practical, flange spreaders or flange jacks shall be used to open flanged joints. Only standards or special wedges shall be used as an alternative. All lines, vessels, and equipment must be drained, vented, cooled, and locked out before issuing a permit. No hot work or spark producing work is to be performed within a 10-foot radius of the opening point until it is determined no flammable materials are present. The person performing the work shall prepare the worksite and complete the worksite preparation section of the permit. When all equipment and worksite preparations are complete and the system is ready for opening, the authorized person and the person performing the work shall review what has been done and shall sign the appropriate permit section. When the work is complete, and the work area cleaned or suspended and secured, the SWP can be terminated. The person performing the work will return the SWP to an area authorized person. The authorized person will sign the termination section of the SWP and forward it to the safety department. Zero Energy State Lockout. The LOTO program prevents unexpected activation or release of energy from equipment or processes Contractor employees shall not operate electrical disconnects or isolate energy sources without authorization from the department the work is being performed in. 
All contractors will be required to follow the facility's ZES program. Hot work, welding and cutting. Contractors performing hot work in the facility must follow facility policies and safety procedures. All equipment must be in safe operating condition and all hot work jobs will require the use of a fire watch. The contractor shall follow facility guidelines for permits and administrative sign-offs. If a contractor is observed conducting hot work operations in an unsafe manner or without the proper authorization, it could result in the contractor employee and or the contractor being dismissed from the facility. Approved safety harnesses must be attached to an anchor point via a lanyard or more preferred retractable lanyard when employees are exposed to fall hazards greater than six feet. The required personal equipment for plant entry has been identified. However, additional PPE for specialized purposes must also be available for the applicable job. All specialized PPE such as chemical protective suits, fall protection equipment, welding helmets and welding sleeves, and specialized gloves shall be approved and must be in good condition. Any job being performed by a contractor where improper PPE is being used will be halted until the correct PPE has been obtained for the job. Ladders. Contractors that use ladders must ensure the ladders are in good condition and must be properly stored after use. Metal ladders are prohibited in the facility. Heavy equipment, including cranes, tractors, wastewater treatment equipment, trailers, heavy-duty forklifts, powered industrial trucks, control and filtering systems, must be approved prior to entry into the facility. Contractors must be able to provide proof that their employees have been properly trained to safely operate the equipment. Vehicular traffic, including forklifts, pickup trucks, golf carts, etc., in the plant, poses a potential hazard to pedestrians. Always check roadways for traffic before crossing. Additionally, if a truck is parked, be sure the driver is aware of your presence before walking in front of it. Powered industrial trucks are used very frequently in the plant. Watch for such vehicles entering and exiting the Flacker buildings and at blind intersections, especially on the aprons at the Zunester and Resin Warehouse. Warning lights must be activated when entering Zonester and Resin Warehouse, alerting forklift drivers and production personnel of your presence. Instructions on how to use terms. This next section will cover access to chemical hazard information, as well as specific chemicals used in the workplace. Material safety data sheets for chemicals used in the plant are available 24 hours a day on computers in control rooms. MSDSs are also available in the main office environmental department during normal work hours. A contractor may not bring any hazardous chemical into the plant without the approval of the EHS department. PSM, Process Safety Management, Terpene Plant. Process safety management provides significant benefits to the company involved in the processing of hazardous materials. The standard develops a fundamental understanding of how chemical substances behave under normal and abnormal circumstances. It also provides a framework for addressing critical activities which can result in more reliable and predictable business operations with fewer losses. Other benefits the standard provides include fewer pipe and vessel leaks, less production upsets, and improved uptime. Process safety management ultimately addresses the safety and well-being of workers and members of the community at large. The Panama City plant follows the regulations set by the OSHA standard 1910.119 to prevent or minimize the consequences of catastrophic releases of toxic, flammable, or explosive chemicals. The Panama City plant is committed to help ensure that contractors performing very specialized and potentially hazardous tasks such as confined space entry and hot work will work safely and not jeopardize their safety as well as the safety of the plant's employees. Chemical Hazards We have four primary classes of hazardous chemicals at Panama City, flammables, corrosives, oxidizers, and toxics. 
Flammable materials have a flash point of maximum of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that there are enough vapors present without heating to ignite if there is a source of ignition. Combustible materials have a flash point of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and above. Flammables include xylene, styrene, crude sulfate turpentine, and various terpenes. We use two basic types of corrosives at the Panama City plant, acids with a pH less than 7 and caustics or bases with a pH greater than 7. Acids utilized on site include sulfuric, hydrochloric, and phosphoric. Caustics include caustic soda and caustic potash. If a corrosive material gets on your skin, you will feel a burning, itching sensation, a possible reddening or darkening of the skin. And if it is caustic, you will feel a slippery feeling. Immediately wash the area with water for a minimum of 15 minutes. Then notify your supervisor or an Arizona chemical employee so you can receive medical attention. We have eye wash safety showers throughout the site. You should always locate and test any safety equipment in the area in which you are working. Aluminum chloride is yellow to gray crystals. Aluminum chloride reacts violently with water. When exposed to water or high humidity, it releases toxic and corrosive hydrogen chloride. This toxic chemical is used in the resin plant. Only authorized personnel may enter this area. Xylene is a clear colorless liquid that will cause skin irritation. Sulfuric acid is a dangerous corrosive, which is a clear colorless to cloudy liquid. Sulfuric acid will cause severe skin burns. Liquid caustic soda used at rosin upgrade is also a highly corrosive chemical. Hydrogen sulfide or H2S gas is another toxic chemical that may be present in low concentrations. This gas smells like rotten eggs. Alarms are located in the plant to detect and warn of potential hazard. If the employee alarm system evacuation alarm is sounded, look for the wind indicators on the top of the largest structures, example, tall oil plant, turpin plant towers, or the main gate guardhouse. If no wind indicators are visible, observe the rock tin stacks to determine the safest route to your respected safe zone. Try to keep yourself from being directly downwind of the smoke or plume. Nobody can re-enter unless specifically authorized by the incident commander. Locate the nearest eyewash safety shower in the area where the work is being performed in the event of any chemical exposure. Report all incidents, whether they are serious or minor, to your Arizona chemical contact. We are committed to the prevention of spills or releases, compliance with all regulatory requirements, pollution prevention and proper waste segregation, disposal, and recycling. We have a chemical approval policy that prohibits incidental oils, paints, solvents, etc. from entering site without prior approval. Contractors who bring chemicals in the plant must acquire approval before entering. We have strict policies to help ensure the control of all chemicals in the plant. Deliberate or intentional releases to the in-plant process wastewater system or to the environment are prohibited. Paint wastes, stripper wastes, solids or other liquids are not to be discharged to the wastewater system. Any spills or releases should be reported immediately to the environmental department. Arizona Chemical will handle the disposal of all solid and hazardous wastes. The contract coordinator will indicate the appropriate dumpster for waste disposal. Spent aerosol cans must be placed in the satellite accumulation drums located throughout the plant. Contact your contractor contact or a representative from the environmental department on proper waste disposal guidelines. At Arizona Chemical, we believe that safety is our best return on investment. We are glad to have you at our site today and hope that these messages about our safety and environmental policies and procedures are beneficial to you.